the only country that causes concern in the West. They are terrified of it since thousands of centuries. Ancient knowledge, ancient techniques, military power of all time, patriotism of its leaders. It has existed for countless millions of years. It is now highly threatening West world because they are concerned that it will collaborate with Russia in the war against Ukraine. From Mesopotamia, land enclosed between Euphrates River and Tigris River. Former Babylon, what do you know about Iran? Have you had any curiosity to know more about the land of Golston Palace? Let us now discuss the beautiful country feared by other nations and concerned about its operations. Iran Archaeological evidences and modern researches in history of Iran show that from 100,000 BC, various ethnic groups with similar cultures lived on the Iranian plateau. But very little has been known about these cultures until the Aryan migration about 90,000 years later. Nonetheless, archaeological discoveries have shown that the people who lived in that area before the Aryans were people of peace-loving, agricultural, and artistic nature. Linguistically, Iran means the land of Aryans, the eastern branch of Indo-Europeans. A group of Aryans who migrated to the Iranian plateau around 2000 BC from Central Asia are thought to be the direct ancestors of modern Iranians. This has encouraged many historians to start the history of Iran from the Aryan migrations or the establishment of the first Aryan political power, the Achaemenid Empire. At the same time, it is true that long before the influx of Aryans into Iran, different peoples with established civilizations and kingdoms inhabited the country. These dynasties that deteriorated before the arrival of the Aryans or were defeated by them had an extensive system of international trade and relations with other civilizations of their time, as far west as Egypt and maybe southern Europe and to China in the east. In 6th century BC Cyrus, the Great founded the Persian Empire, which was destroyed in 330 BC by Alexander the Great. In the following centuries, Persia was ruled by Greeks, Parthians, and Sassanids until the Arab invasion in the middle 7th century when the ancient Persian religion of Zoroastrianism gave way to Islam. Four centuries later, in the 11th century, the Seljuk Turks arrived, followed by the Mongols under Genghis Khan and his grandson Hilagu Khan in the 13th century and Tamerlane in the 14th century. Another Turkish dynasty from Azerbaijan region, called Safavid Empire, took control in the 16th century. Safavids belonged to a Sufi religious order and made Shiite Islam the official religion of Iran, undertaking a major conversion campaign of Iranian Muslims. The Safavid dynasty reached its height during the reign of Shah Abbas I. It was during his reign that Persia once again came to be known in Europe as a superpower, because it was the greatest opponent of the Ottomans, and their wars saved Europe, the Ottomans being too occupied on the east fighting Iran to make headway in the west. In 18th to 19th century under Qajar dynasty, centuries Iran fall under the increasing pressure of European nations, particularly the Russian Empire and the Great Britain. The discovery of oil in early 1,900 seconds intensified the rivalry of the Great Britain and Russia for power over the nation. After the First World War Iran was admitted to the United Nations as an original member. In 1921 Reza Khan, an army officer, established a military dictatorship. He was subsequently elected hereditary Shah, thus ending the Qajar dynasty and founding the new Pahlavi dynasty. The Medes were an ethnic group of Aryan descent who settled in the western part of the Iranian plateau. The land of the Medes included the western part of the Iranian plateau. The land of Azerbaijan in the northwest of the Iranian plateau was known as Little Media, and the rest of the Zagros region was known as Great Media. The capital of the Medes was ancient Hegmatene, present Hamadan. Deoses founded the Median Empire. The exact date of the era of Deoses' rule is not clear and probably covered most of the first half of the 7th century BC according to Herodotus. Deoses governed for 53 years. The Assyrian Kingdom, considered the most ruthless power at the time, fell to the Medes. Medes were able to establish the first state in the history of Iran in the late 8th century BC. The Medes' government was abolished by Cyrus the Great in around 550 BC, and the Median rule passed to the Persians. The Achaemenid Empire was the largest that the ancient world had seen, extending from Anatolia and Egypt across Western Asia to Northern India and Central Asia. The foundation of Achaemenids began in 550 BC, when King Astyges of Media, who dominated much of Iran and Eastern Anatolia, was defeated by his southern neighbor Cyrus I, a Persia ruler R. 559,530 BC. This upset the balance of power in the Near East. The Lydians of Western Anatolia and the Babylonian Empire who controlled Mesopotamia and the Eastern Mediterranean territories were later conquered by Cyrus the Great. In 539 BC, Cyrus entered Babylon and presented himself as a traditional Mesopotamian monarch, restoring temples and releasing political prisoners. The one Western power that remained unconquered in Cyrus' lightning campaigns was Egypt. 
This task was left to his eldest son and crown prince Cambyses to rout the Egyptian forces in the eastern Nile Delta in 525 BC. After a 10-day siege, Egypt's ancient capital Memphis fell to the Persians. A crisis at court forced Cambyses to return to Persia but he died mysteriously en route and his commander-in-chief Darius was crowned as the new King R. 522,486 BC. Under Darius the Great, the empire was stabilized, with roads for communication and a system of governors established. He added northwestern India to the Achaemenid realm and initiated two major building projects, the construction of royal buildings at Susa and the creation of the new dynastic center of Persepolis, the buildings of which were decorated by Darius and his successors with stone reliefs and carvings. These show tributaries from different parts of the empire processing toward the enthroned king or conveying the king's throne. The impression is of a harmonious empire supported by its numerous peoples. Darius also consolidated Persia's western conquests in the Aegean. However, in 498 BC, the eastern Greek Ionian cities, supported in part by Athens, revolted. It took the Persians four years to crush the rebellion, although an attack against mainland Greece was repulsed at Marathon in 490 BC Darius' son Xerxes R. 486,465 BC attempted to force the mainland Greeks to acknowledge Persian power, but Sparta and Athens refused to give way. Xerxes led his sea and land forces against Greece in 480 BC, defeating the Spartans at the Battle of Thermopylae and sacking Athens. However, the Greeks won a victory against the Persian navy in the Straits of Salamis in 479 BC. It is possible that at this point a serious revolt broke out in the strategically crucial province of Babylonia. Xerxes quickly left Greece and successfully crushed the Babylonian rebellion. However, the Persian army he left behind was defeated by the Greeks at the Battle of Plataea in 479 BC. Much of our evidence for Persian history is dependent on contemporary Greek sources and later classical writers, whose main focus is the relations between Persia and the Greek states, as well as tales of Persian court intrigues, moral decadence, and unrestrained luxury. From these we learn that Xerxes was assassinated and was succeeded by one of his sons, who took the name Artaxerxes IR, 465,424 BC. During his reign, revolts in Egypt were crushed and garrisons established in the Levant. The empire remained largely intact under Darius II R, 423,405 BC, but Egypt claimed independence during the reign of Artaxerxes II R, 405,359 BC. Although Artaxerxes II had the longest reign of all the Persian kings, we know very little about him. Writing in the early 2nd century ad, Plutarch describes him as a sympathetic ruler and courageous warrior. With his successor, Artaxerxes III R, 358,338 BC, Egypt was reconquered, but the king was assassinated, and his son was crowned as Artaxerxes IVR, 338,336 BC. He, too, was murdered and replaced by Darius III R, 336,330 BC, a second cousin, who faced the army of Alexander the Great. Ultimately Darius III was murdered by one of his own generals, and Alexander claimed the Persian Empire. After Alexander's death, his conquered regions were divided among his generals, and most of his Asian conquests, of which Iran was the core, reached Seleucus I. Thus Iran came under the rule of the Seleucids. Seleucids ruled over large parts of western Iran for 80 years, but there was almost no peace in their territory. After a while, the Parthians expanded their influence and finally they were able to destroy the Seleucids. Having previously served as an infantry general under Alexander the Great, Seleucus I eventually assumed the title of Basilius and established the Seleucid Empire. This was of the major powers of the Hellenistic world, which controlled most of Asia Minor, Syria, Mesopotamia, and the Iranian Plateau until overcome by Parthian Empire in Iran and by the Roman Republic in the Western territories in the late 2nd and early 1st centuries BC. This nation was governed by a number of emperors, some of whom reigned for about 247 BC. 224 AD years were Parthian Empire. The Parthian Empire, also known as the Arsacid Empire, was a great Iranian political and cultural power in ancient Iran from 247 BC to 224 AD. Its latter name comes from its founder, Arsaces I, who led the Parni tribe in conquering the region of Parthia in Iran's northeast, then a province under a Seleucid governor called Andragoras, in rebellion against the Seleucid Empire. Later, Mithridates I R. C. 171,132 BC expanded the boundaries by seizing Media and Mesopotamia from the Seleucids. At its height, the Parthian Empire stretched from the northern reaches of the Euphrates, in what is now central eastern Turkey, to present-day Afghanistan and western Pakistan. 
The empire, located on the Silk Road trade route between the Roman Empire and the Mediterranean Basin, and the Han Dynasty of China became a center of trade and commerce. The Parthians valued the Greek civilization that had emerged in Iran during the Seleucid period. Some Parthian kings were well acquainted with Greek literature, and some Greek games were performed at the court of the Parthian kings. At that time, there was a parliament called Maestan, which itself consisted of two parliaments. One was the aristocratic parliament and the other was the religious parliament of the Zoroastrian priests, which had a consultative aspect and did not have much influence in affairs. This nation was governed by a number of emperors, some of whom reigned for about 224 to 651 years were Sasanian Empire. The name Sasanians is derived from a Persian priest named Sassan, the ancestor of the dynasty. Sassan's grandson Ardashirai defeated the last Parthian king Artabanus IV in 226. He took Ctesiphon, the capital of the Parthian Empire and ended Parthian dynasty. Ardashir accepted the title of King of Kings, which had until then been used by the Parthian kings and, centuries before, the Achaemenid rulers of Persia. In the Sasanian rock reliefs and inscriptions, we often see investiture scenes, in which the god Ahiramazda, seated on a horse, hands over power to a king. These Mazda-worshipping kings, or believers in the supreme god Ahiramazda conferred many privileges to the Magians, the religious specialists of Zoroastrianism, who gained great political power by playing a role in the inauguration ceremony in C. Tesiphon, served as judges and tax collectors. As a consequence of this religious ideology, there was little room for alternative ideas. Christians were persecuted, and the prophet Mani, who had tried to combine Christianity, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism, was crucified. The conflict with Rome, which had started in 231 with some fighting on the Euphrates, escalated under Ardashir's son and successor Shaparai. According to Roman sources, he made territorial claims, he wanted to restore the Achaemenid Empire and demanded all Roman territories in Asia, a claim that was implied in his title King of Iran and non-Iran. Nevertheless, to reach Nisibis, Shapur raided large parts of the Roman East. When he invaded Syria and looted Antioch, a Roman counterattack was inevitable. The Emperor Gordian III invaded Mesopotamia and was at first successful, but was killed in action during a battle near C. Tesiphon. His successor, Philip the Arab, was forced to conclude a shameful peace treaty, and with some justification, Shapur claimed to have put Philip on the Roman throne. Roman POWs were forced to build the city of Bishapur, where a rock relief commemorated his triumph. The next phase of the war was even more disastrous to the Romans. Their Emperor Valerian was not just defeated, he was even captured. The humiliation, shown on rock reliefs at Bishapur and at naqsh e rostam could not be more complete. However, under the emperors Odinathus, Carus, and Diocletian, the Romans restored their fortunes and in 298, a peace treaty was concluded in which the Persians had to give up territories in northern Mesopotamia. Shapur also attacked the Kushans, who ruled the region known as Gandhara, the valley of the river Kabul. The Persians took their capital Peshawar and deposed the ruling dynasty. A precious religious object, Buddha's begging bowl, was taken to Persia. King Shapur II attacked the Roman possessions in Mesopotamia and defeated and killed the Roman emperor Julianus Apostata who had come to punish the attacker. The Romans were forced to give up the conquests of 298. Like his namesake, Shapur II attacked the Kushan kingdom, which he overthrew. The sphere of influence of the Sasanian Empire now reached to the borders of China. Shapur also invaded Arabia. Other enemies were the White Huns, who invaded the Sasanian Empire during the 5th century. What is true, however, is that several religious groups coexisted more or less peacefully. The main exception is a religious jackery in Iran that is called Mazdakism. Its adherents had several ideas that remind us of pre-Leninist communism. King Khosrowai the deathless soul suppressed it in 530 seconds, and its adherents may have fled to Arabia. The final struggle of the East Roman Empire, now called Byzantine Empire, and Persia started under Khosrow II the Victorious. Again, the Sasanians were the aggressor. The Byzantines were weakened, because Italy had been invaded by the Langobards, the Slavs were taking hold of the Balkans, and Andalusia was lost to the Visigoths. It was the perfect moment to attack the Byzantine Empire, and Khosrow acted accordingly. His armies ravaged the cities of Syria and sacked Jerusalem in 614. One of the objects the Persians took away was the relic of the True Cross. Khosrow's armies went on to invade Egypt, Alexandria was captured in 619, and in 626, their advance guards paused only a mile from Constantinople. The Persians even raided Cyprus and occupied Rhodes. It seemed as if the Achaemenid Empire was restored, and Khosrow ordered the making of brilliant rock reliefs at Taki Bustan. However, the Byzantine Emperor Heraclius
Heraclius was to prove a match for Khosro. In 627, he invaded Assyria and Mesopotamia. His campaign was extremely successful. He did not even return to his own empire during the winter, but stayed far behind the enemy lines. The Persian army mutinied and Khosro was murdered. His successor Artisir IV made peace and the relic of the true cross was restored to Jerusalem. Heraclius' victory meant the end of Persia. There were four Sasanian kings in four years, and because there was no real authority, the Arabs, Muslims, were able to defeat the Persians, who were still Zoroastrians. The last Persian king was Yazgird III, whose reign began in 632. In 636, the Arabs took Ctesiphon. In 641, they invaded Iran. And ten years later, the last Sasanian king died as a fugitive. After all now let come up to the modern society, the Arab rule. After the establishment of Islam in Iran, which occurred as a result of the victory of the Muslim Arabs over the Sassanids, and their conquest of Iran, many changes in the social, religious and political spheres took place in the history of Iran. Muslim domination of Iran was not easy. The cities soon accepted Muslim rule, but the countryside simply did not submit to their rule. The eastern parts of Iran, as well as Tabaristan and Jilin, were later occupied by the Muslims. They had to conquer a place many times. Dissatisfied with the class discrimination in their country, the Iranians embraced Islam and sought to spread it. But they never hid their opposition to Umayyad and Abbasid rule in Iran, and formed independent movements that formed governments such as Tahirians and Safarids can be considered as their results. Around 1037 to 1194 the Seljuk Empire. The Seljuk Empire was a high medieval Turco-Persian Sunni Muslim empire. The Seljuks were a group of nomadic Turkish warriors from the Kinnik branch of Aghaz Turks from Central Asia who established themselves in the Middle East during the 11th century as guardians of the declining Abbasid Caliphate. After 1037, they founded the Great Seljuk Sultanate, an empire centered in Baghdad and including Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. At the time of its greatest extent, the Seljuk Empire controlled a vast area, stretching from western Anatolia and the Levant in the west to the Hindu Kush in the east, and from Central Asia to the Persian Gulf in the south. The Seljuk Empire was founded in 1037 by Tugrul and his brother Chagri. From their homelands near the Aral Sea, the Seljuks advanced first into Khorasan, and then into mainland Persia, before eventually conquering Baghdad and eastern Anatolia. The Seljuks won the Battle of Manzikert in 1071, and then conquered most of the rest of Anatolia, wresting it from the Byzantine Empire. This was one of the impetuses for the First Crusade. The Seljuk Empire began to decline in the 1140 seconds, and by 1194 had been supplanted by the Kh Khwarazmian Empire. Have you ever heard about Mongol Empire? From 1206 to 1368, the Mongol Empire emerged from the unification of several nomadic tribes in the Mongol homeland under the leadership of Genghis Khan C. 1162122-7, whom a council proclaimed as the ruler of all Mongols in 1206. Under Genghis Khan, the Mongols first conquered northern China and then the eastern Islamic lands. The empire grew rapidly under his rule and that of his descendants, who sent out invading armies in every direction. After Genghis Khan died in 1227, this golden dynasty passed to his family. In the 1230 seconds, Genghis Khan's sons and daughters defeated the Turks of Central Asia and the Russian principalities. Then in 1241 they destroyed two European armies. In the 1250 seconds, after 40 years of non-stop wars, the Mongols conquered Iran and the whole Islamic territory as far as Baghdad. Life in the Mongol Empire was not just war, looting and destruction. When the Mongols conquered a territory, they had nothing to do with their domestic politics and used local rulers to rule. The Mongols allowed religions to flourish as long as their leaders prayed for them. But it did not last very long, the succession of the Great Khan was not automatically transferred to the older son. But brothers, uncles and cousins were allowed to lead, while the senior widows served as viceroys for their sons. The empire began to split due to wars over succession, as the grandchildren of Genghis Khan disputed whether the royal line should follow from his son and initial heir Ojde or from one of his other sons, such as Talui, Chagatai, or Jachai. In 1260 seconds, Genghis Khan's descendants were embroiled in a civil war over inheritance, dividing the territory into four separate empires. Kublai Khan founded the Yuan Kingdom in China, which is known as the Golden Age of Science and Culture. The Ilkhans came to power in Iran and developed a new Persian architecture and many cultural achievements. In Central Asia, Chagatai Khanate overthrew leaders such as Timur and his successor, Babur, established the Mughal Empire in India. And in Eastern Europe, the Golden Horde ruled for many years. Although the Mongol Empire was in power for a short time, the Mongols left a legacy that is unparalleled to this day. 
What about the Timurid Empire 1370-1507? The Timurid Empire, self-designated as Gurkhani, was a Persianate Turco-Mongol empire comprising modern-day Iran, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, the southern region of the Caucasus, Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, much of Central Asia as well as parts of contemporary Russia, India, Pakistan, Syria and Turkey. The empire was founded by Timur, a warlord of Turco-Mongol lineage, who established the empire between 1370 and his death in 1405. Timur acquired the title Gurkhan, Mongolian term for royal son-in-law because of his marriage to a Genghis Khan's descendant. Timur was interested in settled lands of ancient Islamic or Indian culture and eventually built his capital at Samarkand. His rise to power began in Transoxiana. The later Timurids were mere local rulers in Khurasan and Transoxiana. The Timurid period was one of the most glorious periods in medieval Islamic art in Transoxiana and Persia. He envisioned himself as the great restorer of the Mongol Empire of Genghis Khan, regarded himself as Genghis's heir. Timur continued vigorous trade relations with Ming China and the Golden Horde. The empire led to the Timurid Renaissance, particularly during the reign of astronomer and mathematician Ulug Beg. By 1467, the ruling Timurid dynasty, or Timurids, lost most of Persia to the Ak Khoyanlu Confederation. But members of the Timurid dynasty continued to rule smaller states, sometimes known as Timurid Emirates, in Central Asia and parts of India. In the 16th century, Babur, a Timurid prince from Fergana, invaded Kabulistan and established a small kingdom there. Twenty years later, he used this kingdom as a staging ground to invade India, and established the Mughal Empire. Safavid Empire also took a control 1501-1736. The Safavid Empire, which was founded as a political dynasty in 1501, was the second great Islamic empire to form in Persia. It originated as a religious sect, and it acquired the military and political traits of an empire only after 1501. The Safavid Empire also differed from the Ottoman and Mughal empires because it was an official Shiite empire. Religious differences led to much hostility between the Safavids and its Sunni rivals. The Safavid Empire was formed in 1501 and ended by the invasion of Afghans in 1722. It forever influenced Persian nationalism. Safavids, the dynasty that ruled on Iran for almost 200 years, is often considered the beginning point of modern Persian history. Safavids' achievement to establish the Shiism as Iran's state religion was a major factor in the emergence of a united national consciousness among the various ethnic and linguistic elements of the country. As Shiism spread during the 15th century, so did the Shiite Sufi orders, and their forces increased. The oldest Shiite Sufi order at this time was attributed to the Safavid Sufi family, descendants of Sheikh Safi al-Din Ardabili, chief of the Sufi order of Safaviyye, who gradually established power in Azerbaijan region and the neighboring area. They provided a monarchy-like system until, as we know, they came to the Kingdom of Iran at the beginning of the 16th century. Throughout the Iranian history, the emergence of the Safavid dynasty is an important turning point. After centuries of being under control of foreign rule, Iran is once again becoming a powerful and independent state in the Islamic East. Qajar's family, 1789-1925 One of the largest families in Iran was called the Qajar family who ruled Iran for about 150 years. The Qajar dynasty was notorious for its incompetence in Iranian history and the Iranian economy was declining during this period. Aga Mohammad Khan, as the founder of this dynasty, held his coronation ceremony in 1796 in Tehran. The last Qajar king was Ahmed Shah, whose was overthrown in 1304. In the early 20th century, the Iranian Constitutional Revolution created an elected parliament, or Majlis, and sought the establishment of a constitutional monarchy, deposing King Mohammad Ali Shah for Ahmad Shah, but many of the constitutional reforms were reversed by an intervention led by the Russian Empire. Qajar Iran's territorial integrity was further weakened during the Persian campaign of World War I and the invasion by the Ottoman Empire. Four years after the 1921 coup d'etat, Reza Shah took power in 1925 forming Pahlavi Iran. Aga Mohammad Khan Qajar was the founder of the Qajar Kingdom of Iran. Originally chieftain of the Koyanlu branch of the Qajar tribe, Aga Mohammad Khan was enthroned as the king of Iran in 1789 and ruled Iran until 1797. He deposed Laf Ali Khan of the Zan dynasty in 1794. Aga Mohammad Khan was a eunuch monarch, being castrated as a young adult upon his capture by Adel Shah of Shar and hence was childless. He was assassinated on the 17th of June 1797 and was succeeded by his nephew, Fath Ali Shah.